I remember when we were doing the Chinese fraud uh, trade, there was one fund. If they were invested, you know, we sort of, for a while, for a couple of months, we just went after all the names in there. (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever been stopped out of a short um, and then ultimately been proven wrong and kind of missed the move that that later came? Or have you... Have you never really had to deal with that yourself? Oh, all the time. Yeah. I mean, if you like, if you stick to your guns on shorting, as a hedge fund, you'll be out of business. As a trader, you'll lose all your money. You yep. know, shorting is not anywhere. It's not the place you want to be a hero. Correct. Um, you'll get your face ripped off. Yes. It's not that all the time. <laughs> 14 years of doing this. Yeah. <laughs> you have thick skin. I can't even I can't even you know no, it makes a list sense. of the number of times I've been stopped out and then like been right about the thesis. I mean like right. I find we're typically right about the thesis, but uh that doesn't necessarily mean the trades are profitable. Yeah. Have as a fund manager, how do you determine risk on, on certain trades like that? Are you like do you have an A is it like an A plus setup to you, right? Like that kind of idea, or is it like, you know, each different time you attack a company, you're gonna increase your risk depending on your how certain you are that it's gonna go down kind of thing. Um, how do you determine that? Yeah. Um, yeah, so some ideas, you know, we like better. Some ideas you know, we believe in the fundamentals, but from a risk management standpoint you know we make those positions smaller um there's a lot that goes into it you know the quality of the idea um the market environment you know april 2021 you're probably sizing things differently than um you know middle of 22 for instance um i remember hindenburg came out with a report back then i think it was like february 20 one and he like came out with a report and he's like we don't have a position (laughs) 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 the market environment definitely impacted his position sizing there and that he had no position (laughs) (laughs) Um, like had the report then so he came out with a report um that that was a sign well all this work went into this research so i guess i'm just gonna put it out there but i'm not trading (laughs) that and i think that was within weeks where citron Mm -hmm. Uh, announced that he was no longer shorting. And that was like the top of the market, you know, yep. <laughs> destroyed over the next 18 months. Um, retrospect was obvious. It's funny. But um, yeah, you know, so market environment will impact our position sizing. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot, you know, we've, we've just done this a lot over, over many years. Um, and so, um, you know, I think we have a sophisticated perspective on how to go about the strategy. Absolutely. That's a, that's super cool. Um, recently, like about in the past six months, we had this sector where there were tons of like China junk stocks just going like to the moon. Um, did those ever hit your radar to maybe do some like activism on, or maybe you did some? I think all of those are just too small for us. You know, we want at least like 10, $15 million ADV and 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 borrow available and i think a lot of those like china like i don't know i don't know what that stuff is right like who's doing it and trading it like we watch it um but it's it's just too like a lot of that stuff's just too small for us to trade so our focus isn't there versus stocks where we can build sort of more meaningful positions and get borrow and stuff yeah and uh, also recently, you uh, did the whole short report on Tilray. Maybe you could kind of explain uh, how you went about that process to our viewers. Yeah, so you know we like stocks that are on the shorts where management is is constantly diluting shareholders, and um, you know I think on the short side we like situations where you know the crowd. Has, has gone into the stock and sort of, you know, you know, the long side gets crowded, but the thesis is wrong. And so what's happened, what happened with the marijuana stocks is that the legislation, the progress on legislation in the U.S. Um, is good for most wheat stocks like the MSOs, but it doesn't, imp- it doesn't really help the Canadian licensed producers. And yet they participated in the rally, um, partly because 
you know, they've been heavily shorted and, and the stocks have done so badly. And, um, and so, you know, Tilray benefited from that. So it was up a lot on the marijuana news, but really wasn't benefiting from the legislation. Um, and then, you know, those Canadian players are just continue just to be in a world of hurt because they're, they're really competing with, you know, uh, individual private farmers and much smaller companies. And it's an oversaturated market. Supply and demand is not in their favor. They're not generating profit. Tilray has been trying to diversify into other lines of business. They bought Anheuser-Busch craft, craft beer business. We think that that acquisition doesn't make a whole lot of sense and won't be successful. And what well, goes better than beer and weed? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, if it was, I think just for them, you know, that craft craft beer is it's a very local market, you know, so acquiring all right. of these sort of like craft beer brands that Anheuser Bush wants to get rid of is probably not going to be very successful. You know. <laughs> Seems kind of like a uh, just a guilty pleasure of someone in on the board or in very far upper management. <laughs> just went, you know what? I want a craft brewery. <laughs> it's a main <laughs> purchase. <laughs> yeah, you know, we talk about this in the report, but I think, you know, the CEO or Erwin Simon um, has a prior track record. You know, he, he sort of ran Hain and the stock went up a lot and then it went down a lot. And we have this sense that he just likes to acquire things and like make deals, but like the whole thing doesn't really make a whole lot of much sense. And Hain um was a good example of that where he was just acquiring a bunch of stuff but um you know those, those acquisitions didn't play out um as originally anticipated and the stock has done pretty badly Haynes done pretty badly and he's sort of doing the same thing with Tilray in our opinion mm-hmm. and and um you know I think when you acquire stuff you have to have um you know a sound basis for doing so and it should be accretive and not really sure that's what he goes for his track record of not really um so you mentioned these 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 particular ceos that kind of have a have a habit of going off of the rails is there kind of like a a little list like a blacklist of if these particular ceos take take a role in a company you immediately target that company as a potential short later on are you following any of these people um, in what they do professionally, uh, there, there are there are actually some that we do follow. Yeah, um, the habitual offenders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I find I don't know if it's like our it's not like our number one screening tool. Um, no, you know we have a team, right? So, um, you know, some of the investment professionals probably use that as more of a sourcing tool than others. Uh, for the most part. You know, our team's pretty experienced, and so I, I let them source ideas, you know, how, how they think is best um, versus sort of superposing some process on, on what they do. Um, and and I'm sure, um, you know, they do look at the players, but we like situations where, you know, the stock has done well and people have crowded into a name and we can publish on it and so. Sometimes we're reacting to things that have gone parabolic, um, areas of the market that have gotten hyped up, and then we do research on it and we say, oh, well, there's that there's that CEO that we saw before or that, um, uh, you know, pipe fund and their capital structure or whatever the case may be, you know, whatever sort of some of these players that we've seen before and, and we like to take the other side of. I remember when we were doing the Chinese fraud uh, trade, there was one fund that if they were invested, you know, we sort of for a while, for a couple of months, we just went after all the names in there. (laughs) (laughs) Now one of the analysts from it, like we were really good friends, but (laughs) (laughs) just business. They they thought that the companies were were real. um, And then as the short activism came out, you know, they sort of realized that they weren't real. And so then they started shorting the stocks themselves. I mean, as day traders, that's a side of fundamentals that we can really appreciate is there are those particular funds that just have a tendency to do that really toxic financing. And you know, if they're involved, there's some shysty business going on and 
they're going to offer it some ridiculous price based on these warrants or this or that or anything. And you mentioned pipes as well. There's, there's, um, there's a Twitter guy, Auspex Research, that is, he wrote this huge back in the day of when Twitlonger was a thing. He wrote this huge thing about uh, the, the habitual offenders on the pipe on the pipe list. And uh, I think that's one that day traders can really appreciate is pay yeah, attention. We, um, we actually wrote a report on uh, FFIE, Faraday Future. Oh, cool. Yeah. And we had the report and we're sort of sitting on it. And, you know, we started seeing these pipe funds in there. And I'm like, you know what? We won't <laughs> issue the report. Like, I don't want this trade to be crowded. This is just going to be the gift that keeps on giving. So we just shorted the stock, went down. And then, like, every time it would pop, I'm like, oh, should we come up with a report? I'm like, nah. Like, short is just <laughs> below. The, the bar cost is still below 10%. percent will just, like, short short more. And How do you make that choice? Uh, we sort of, like, actually didn't put out the report because it's sort of like, I thought – Rather than getting the name credit, because part of the problem with our reports is, you know, we get some of these names credited. I mean, if you look at what happened with AI, et cetera, you know, like is part of that squeeze because Carisdale came out with the report, right? Um, and so FFI the case can be made in that situation where now you have that knowledge. Are there any situations where you are uh, in terms of like protecting risk profiles and things like that? Are there strategies that you put in place that, you know, when you put this short report out, you need to put it out. But the the herbs of the retail world are probably going to try to run this up. Do you do anything as a fund to protect against that and maybe hedge that position? Yeah. So I don't. I actually was saying I think that it's it's. I think one of the impact of the increased participation by retail in the stock market is actually there's a lot more people shorting stocks, right? You sort of don't talk about it. You talk about, you, you hear about the apes and, you know, people buying AMC and Robinhood, but as retail has got, like most, most investors aren't like buying AMC stock on the long side, you know, like some of them talk about it and they put out ape memes, but like most people don't want to lose money in the market right? They want to make money in the markets. So you're likelier to have your sort of typical retail investor actually be short AMC than be long AMC. People don't really talk about this, but like it's sort of intuitive, right? Like AMC has is, is been a short for a long time, you know, like the lever and these, these uh, movie theaters aren't going to generate enough cash flow to cover their debt, right? And so you sort of, you know, they get heavily shorted and, and people think it's just hedge funds shorting the stock. I'm not sure that's true. I think it's a lot of retail shorting these stocks. These names, they get crowded, you know, when like Carvana gets crowded or ANC gets crowded. I think it's a lot of retail shorting the stocks that's making uh, that's making it a crowded short, causing those high short interest, then causing those... 